Well, in this video, we're going to talk about combinations of functions. And what that means is you might be given two or three functions, maybe call them f, g, and h. And we're going to use those three functions or two functions and combine them in a certain way to come up with a new function. And there are several ways to do that that we'll see in a few minutes. But first, we're going to talk about uh, domain and um, making sure we can find the domain of a given function. So first, let's look at uh, intervals. And the reason we're looking at intervals first is frequently the domain of a function can be represented using an interval. So recall that this interval, this is called an open interval because it's parentheses instead of brackets. The interval from A to B, A is less than B, is defined to be all the real numbers in between them in between A and B, strictly in between. So here's our set notation. It's the set of all X's, which is real numbers. The set of all X's, that colon is such that X has been in between A and B. Set of all X, such that A is less than X, which is less than B. A and B are real numbers, as mentioned, and A is less than B. Okay, that's kind of the definition of the open interval. I'm not going to go through all of these again as we've seen them before, but what do all the following um, intervals represent? Well, these first three are nearly identical to this one. This first one has a square bracket on the B, so it includes the number B. B is in this set, in this interval, so that would be a less than or equal for this one. And this one, B is, is just like this, so it would stay the same. That would be a less than. But the A is included in the set, so this would be less than or equal right here. <clears throat> and then this one, both of them are included. It includes A and B and every number in between them. So this would be a less than or equal, this would be a less than or equal. And this is the kind of the one-sided interval that basically is every single point, including B, and to the left of B. Okay, negative infinity, so it's the entire you could almost call it like the left half of the real line, but it stops whenever it gets to B, and it includes B. And then this one is just another uh, example. This one goes from A to infinity, but it does not include A. So this, one way of saying this is it's every number greater than A. This is every real number less than or equal to B. As I mentioned, for many functions, the domain can be represented by an interval. That's how we're going to do it. Okay, one more review topic. What is the domain of a function? I'm not defining it here. This is for your own thought here. What is the domain of a function? You could say it's all of the possible x values, the, all of the numbers you could plug into it. I'll say legally, but I think you know what I mean, without causing a problem. Um, so, let me, before we move on, give two quick examples that will ma make it clearer for you. Um, right above here, I'm going to make a function, let's call it f of x equals 1 over x. What is the domain of this function f? Well, the only problem number that you could possibly have is the one that will give you a zero in the denominator. So this would be all real numbers except for the number 0. And how about g of x equals radical x? What's the domain of this function? <clears throat> well, this one's got a lot of problem numbers. As a matter of fact, every negative number is a problem number. <clears throat> so that means every other number is a good one, uh, which means 0 and positive numbers. So every number greater than or equal to 0 is the domain of this one. So for this section only, unless otherwise stated, and I don't think we're going to run into exceptions, <clears throat> the domain of the function, every function we look at, is going to be all real numbers except for those that cause a division by 0, which this was an example of. If x is 0, you get 1 divided by 0, and you're not allowed to divide by 0. That wouldn't even be a real number or except for the ones that cause division by zero or result in taking the square root of a negative number. 
Okay, so that's really, for this section, that's all we have to worry about. We're not looking at trigonometric functions, which you need to worry about, pi over 2 to, you know, possible um, pro problem numbers. All we're going to worry about in this section is functions that have a domain of all real numbers, except for when this might be caused, a division by 0 or a negative number under a square root. <clears throat> all right, so... Let's do some examples and finish up this video. Find the domains of the following functions. f. What is the domain of f? This literally should take one second based upon what we've talked about. The domain, we usually write capital D and then low, you know, like a subscript f is, what's the domain? Well, in this section, unless otherwise stated, the domain of the function is all real numbers except for those that cause division by zero or taking square root of a negative number. Do we have a radical here? Nope. Do we have a division or a fraction? Nope. That's all real numbers. Or you could write domain of f equals negative infinity to infinity. That means the same thing as r. This is equal to the entire real line. Everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that was an easy one. Any polynomial, every polynomial, has a domain of all real numbers. <clears throat> all right, let's move on to the next one. g of x. What do we call this? This is a rational function. We have a polynomial over a polynomial. But in order to find the domain, do we care about the numerator of polynomial? Not at all. The only thing we care about in this section are numbers that give us a division by zero or square root of a negative number. We don't have a radical, so the only problem with this one, the only problem numbers, the numbers not in the domain, would be the ones that give us a zero in the denominator. So how do we figure that out? <clears throat> well, we just write down the x squared minus 2x minus 3. <clears throat> Let's set it equal to zero to find the bad numbers, the numbers that are not in the domain. And let's see, I think this will factor. x, x plus, minus, uh, it's going to be a 3 and a 1, so negative, and it has to add to negative 2, so negative 3 and a positive 1. So the two numbers that would give me a zero would be negative 1, positive 3. Now don't write this down for the domain because you would not, if you did, there would be no way you could get it, I'm going to make up a word here, wronger. <laughs> These are the only two numbers not in the domain. These are the bad numbers. <clears throat> so I'm going to allow you, even if it says write the intervals, uh, write the domains in interval form, I'm going to allow you to write the domain of g equals, in this case, where there are only one or two or three bad numbers, you can say all real numbers minus, and put the bad numbers in a set like that. <clears throat> so that is a perfectly good way to write the domain. Now I'm going to write it in the other way that actually uses intervals. So remember what we've got here. The domain is the entire real line except for negative 1 and 3. So it's all these numbers in the middle and between them. It's all these numbers and it's all these numbers. So I'm going to write this one like an interval, this one like an interval, this one like an interval, and put a union sign in between them. So I'm going to have, see, if I'm going to have to write small here. The domain of G is equal to. Well, this is negative infinity up to negative 1. Union. What's in between these two numbers? Negative 1 to 3. And i got to squeeze one more in here. Maybe I'll put it underneath just so I don't have to squeeze it. This one would be from 3 to infinity. This would be infinity way out here. <clears throat> so, two ways of writing it. And if you're just casually speaking, you, use, you could say the domain of this function g is all real numbers except for negative 1 and 3.
<clears throat> okay, <clears throat> C. C has a radical. So we now, no fractions, but it has a radical. So what I usually do is, what, what's the restriction on this? What would cause us a problem? If we put in like negative 100 for x, we'd get negative 300 plus 15, definitely have a negative num number underneath there. So how do we figure out what to do here? I almost always, when I'm doing a problem like this, I circle what's underneath the radical, that expression, and I force it to be greater than or equal to zero. What I mean by force is set it greater than or equal to zero and solve for x and you are done. So, 15 plus 3x greater than or equal to zero. Subtract 15 from both sides. And I would get 3x by itself on the left, greater or equal, negative 15, and then divide both sides by 3. And what does that give us? x, greater, equal, negative 5. This is not the right form to have it in, but it's very simple to write this as an interval. What are, how do you represent all of the numbers greater than or equal, which means um, to e greater than or equal to negative 5, which means negative 5 or any number to the right on the number line? It would be negative 5 to infinity. And you'd put a square bracket on the negative 5. Oh, and I forgot to put, <clears throat> sorry about this, I'm going to put it backwards here. The domain of h is equal to this. Okay, one more. D. Well, doesn't D look familiar? Uh, the denominator looks exactly like this. So have we done all the work? Do we already know the domain of this one? N almost, not quite. There's one problem here. Definitely, with, with all this arithmetic we did here, x must be greater than or equal to negative 15, uh, sorry, negative, negative 5. Otherwise, we're going to get a negative under the radical. But notice, there's a fraction here. The denominator is not allowed to be 0. Well, what, what number would make it a 0? Negative 5. So what we have now is x greater than negative 5. So one way of doing this would have been, you know, circle that underneath the radical, and instead of saying greater than or equal to 0, set it greater, strictly greater than 0. Because under the radical, you're allowed to have 0 under a radical, but not if it is the denominator of a fraction, because that would make it 0 in the denominator. So the only difference here, the domain of j is going to look just like this, only with it, it can't include the negative 5, so we have to use parentheses. <clears throat> and that's it. That's how you find the domain of functions that have um, fractions in them, which means division divided by, and when they have uh, radicals in them.